man. Do you think you're in the Grand National? Oh, I see. You're not in the Grand National. You're in the Prudential. You know, I can't understand Bonnie Black's best at all lately. I think she must be jealous of those platinum blondes. She's never been the same since her ride to York. Anyway, sit back, hold tight, and I'll tell you all about it. We know Dick Turpin wrote to York. We learned that at college. But just what happens on the way may not be general knowledge. He must have stopped a whore. It only pleased his whore. But when he stop and what he do? Listen for a while and I'll tell you. When Turpin wrote to York, first he stopped at Highgate. He knew his wife would fail unless he looked after Bunny Black best, so he went in the old king's head. With a barmaid had a talk, his flashing eyes gave her a thrill. She fell for him of her own free will, so he pinched her cheek, then he pinched her still, and on he went to York. Giddy up, giddy up, Bunny Black best, only a few more miles I get. Gallopy, gallopy, gallop, you must, and don't let him see your tail for down. When Turpin wrote to York, next he stopped at Barnet. He just had half an hour to spare. So he went into Barnet Fair at the coconut he tried, but only hit the sword. So to the right range he went. The gun he used was somewhat bent, and he shot the fat girl in her tent, and he went on to York. When Turpin rode to York, next he stopped at Ford Up. Poor Black Bess had cast the shoe. Dick stood wondering what to do. There was no blacksmith in sight, so he began to walk. Turpin said, well, here's the feet. But old Black Bess said, it's a reach. I can still go on in my stocking feet. So on they went to York. Giddy up, giddy up, body Black Bess. Only a few more miles I guess. Gallop, 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 you must. Don't let me your tail fall down. When Turpin rode to York, next he stopped at Stamford. He boasted of his liberty. The night was balmy, so was he. The price set on his head made all the country talk. The cashier said, "Hot bother, kid," and made a grab at Dick Turpin. But the mayor lashed out, and the man cashed in, and on they went to York. Turpin and I want your money. E, you're a bit of an optimist. I've just been to Blackpool for my holidays. Anyway, let's have your trinkets. Me what, Sid? Your trinkets. E, you cheeky thing. Don't be so personal with me trinkets. When Turpin rode to York, next he stopped at Rutland. A most uncanny sound they heard. Poor old Beth was most perturbed. Her knees they shook with fright. Her face was white and chalk. Said Dick, that noise is weird, and so towards the woodland he did go. Then a voice said, "Stop your nonsense, yo!" So on they went to York. Giddy up, giddy up, on it like that. Only a few more miles I get. Gallopy, gallopy, gallop you must, and don't let him see your tail for dust. When Turpin rode to York, next he stopped at Grantham. The face coat he held up that night, really he was most polite. He only asked for food, for preference pickled pork. A maiden said, "My life at stake. Whatever you ask for, you can take." So he cut himself a slice of cake, and on he went to York. When Turpin rode to York, next he stopped at Selby. He jumped the turnpike with a leap and woke a head up from its sleep. Although the night was dark, he could see just like a hawk. There's a red light far ahead, I guess. We'll catch it up. Not me, said Ben, but the real light of the Scotch Express. So on they went to York. <laughs> When Turpin rode to York, last he stopped at Fulford. Bess could scarcely crawl it through, and Dick felt like Dick Turpin too. Just two more miles to go, so Bess tried hard to walk. Her height was six feet yesterday, but she wore so much of her legs away. She looked like a dachshund, so they say when they arrived at York. Never mind, never mind, Bonnie Black Bess. We got to York at last, I guess. So now sit down and have a good rest. Oh, we've got to get back to London in the morning.